Hello, and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Maggie Moreland. I'm a certified holistic health practitioner, and I enjoy sharing my personal experience as a woman traversing a health and wellness journey. Um, but here I share a lot of my personal experience as well as things that I've learned about women's health, hormone balance, and holistic pregnancy preparation. Um, so today I'm going to be sharing about more of an intimate topic than what I've talked about before. Um, I have shared some of my experience here, uh, but I haven't shared something quite this intimate. And today I'm going to be talking about how I stopped binging. And I'd like to preface this video by saying that I don't think um, binging or having cravings is something that is ever going to go away 100%. I can say that I don't have uh, any cravings or am experiencing any urges to binge today, um, but that's because of these steps that I've taken um, to not experience these things. But if I was, say, in an environment where there was tons of chocolate and I hadn't eaten anything all day, I would probably binge and eat a bunch of junk food, a bunch of chocolate, whatever was in sight. I'd probably eat it all. Or if I was in an environment with a bunch of junk food, like pizza, because who doesn't like pizza, and I was stressed out, I'd probably eat the freaking pizza and I'd probably eat the whole pizza uh, because it would make me feel better in that situation. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, my experience with binging and the three ways or the three things that helped me to stop binging. Um, so, to be honest, I'm a real person, I'm not perfect, and um, I've had my fair share of binging. If you haven't seen the Fuck Fad Diets video, I highly recommend watching that video because it kind of gives you insight into what the binge and restrictive diet cycle looks like, um, but I was stuck in this vicious cycle for a very long time, um, just restricting and binging and restricting and binging and restricting and binging, um, and it hadn't, it hadn't gotten bad until probably last year, um, but before that, it was something that I was doing, but I wasn't aware or conscious of doing it, so it kind of went under the radar for a really long time, um, but I did have days where you know, I wouldn't eat anything or I'd eat one meal and then the next day I would eat so much. Um, but that kind of behavior went under the radar for a really long time. Um, but last year is when it like threw up in my face pretty much uh, that I that I was having an issue with binging and restricting, of course, because they go hand in hand. But uh, my boyfriend and I, we had just done the carnivore diet, or we were still in doing the carnivore diet. And if you're not familiar with the carnivore diet, um, it is a, an extremely restrictive diet um, where you're only eating animal products. In my case, I was only eating meat and drinking water and having electrolytes and things like that. Um, it's kind of like a step further into like ketogenic type of diet, um, but it's just zero carb, um, complete restriction of everything except meat. And it's pretty intense. And I'm not recommending that anybody do this. I don't recommend anybody do a fad diet. Uh, where I'm at today, I definitely don't recommend fad diets, but um, I did the carnivore diet or started doing the carnivore diet because um, I have experienced a lot of depression, anxiety, and mood swings, which I know now are related mostly to um, a couple different factors, but that's something that's for another video, the mood swings, depression, anxiety, but I went into doing the carnivore diet for a very specific reason, not just for the hell of it, not just for fun, um, but when I went in, you know, I did actually start to get some results. Like my moods did really balance out and things like that. I wasn't experiencing mood swings, but after about three, four months or so in, um, I actually got a job at a restaurant and, um, you know, I would take my food, just my meat to eat at work, how appetizing, um, but to be constantly 
forced to like look at food, other people eating around me, things like that. And it started to become really hard for me to like resist the food. I started, my body started being like, I need something else. I need something more. You know, when I would see the food, I'd be like, wow, that looks good. And I just felt my body need something other than what I was giving it. And um, it's really interesting because after the fact uh, of that, um, I was talking with my boyfriend and we were doing the carnivore diet together and he claims to have experienced the same exact thing and he would um, do very similar things but I don't want to share his experience here because he's not here I didn't ask him if I could share it but he experienced very similar things as I did and I remember being on the carnivore diet and watching a YouTube video by a woman who claimed that the carnivore diet um, completely rid her of her binging tendencies and she didn't have any cravings or anything like that anymore um, which I found you know I was looking for solace or just hope and that it would go away and that I was doing the right thing um, but it just got worse and I ended up binging um, on food at the restaurant and on my days off when my boyfriend was at work um, I would actually go out to different places and I would actually buy food and it was mostly sweets um, so like ice cream or smoothies um, things like that I would just go out and buy them and it's really embarrassing and I've never shared this with anyone other than my partner but I think one day I ended up spending $70 out on like random stuff to eat um, which is a lot of money to spend in a day on one person on food but my body was so hungry and so like starving it needed it needed carbs it really wanted carbs and once it started I couldn't stop and I kept thinking to myself just being where I was in my journey my health and wellness journey you know like oh I have parasites now which is why I have all these cravings and blah 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 like candida overgrowth and the sugar it's bad and and it, it just kept leading me down um, not a very fun path and it got to a point in September or October of last year where I told my boyfriend I was like listen I, I was like I can't do this anymore like we got to start eating other things and we actually did start eating other things um, and the the binging subsided a little bit for for a good amount of time I felt pretty on top of everything and then I decided to restrict my calories um, which again the vicious binge and restrict cycle uh, I decided to restrict my calories in the winter like January uh, because I wanted to lose some weight and that triggered those binges again and I would my boss bought lunch for everybody in the office every day. I usually just brought my own lunch. At the time I was eating like salad with like bacon and a very, it was not a lot of food at all and I needed more food. But they would get like pizza and then I would eat like four slices of pizza and feel really bad about it. So with all of the binging just brought me so much guilt and shame and like I just felt so gross. And I was being dishonest with people that I loved and I felt truly like an addict. And I know that a lot of other women actually talk about their binge experiences, but it's like a real thing and it's it's hard. And like, if you're struggling with this currently, like I feel you because it's really hard um, to know what to say or what to do in those situations because it is very embarrassing. It's like you, like sh the definition of shame is when you feel like you're wrong for doing something like the thing that you're doing is making you a bad person and that's literally how I felt um, and this continued um, like I said if at the beginning of the video if I was in a situation where you know there was food and I was hungry I would binge today and you know I have binged more recently less intense binges um, but I feel like I've gotten to a really good place and I feel like I've actually figured out what causes my binges so I feel like I've gotten to the root of of this and I know how to be smarter than them now and I don't let them control me um, 
So now that I've shared some of my experience and, you know, if you can relate, I would love to hear your story and potentially, um, you know, give you more advice if that's what you're looking for. But I just want to share three of the main things that have helped me stop binging. Um, the first thing is I just stopped restricting food, um, which sounds easy, right? You just start eating food and you stop binging. Um, well, as I mentioned in my experience, um, you know, I did actually start eating more food at one point, um, but I, like even recently, you know, start eating more food, but I was still having um, cravings. Um, but what I'd like to mention now is that I don't just mean like stop restricting in general, you know, like we need to stop restricting carbohydrates and we need to stop restricting calories so those are like the two main things that I've stopped restricting that has really lowered my urge to binge um, just because when we restrict carbohydrates our body is going to crave sugar because sugar is uh, the primary fuel source of our body um, so when we're restricting our body's primary fuel source it would only make sense for it to crave it which leads me into what I believe cravings are at this point in my life. Um, I feel like for a really long time I have demonized cravings as something bad, but really cravings are something good. When you have a craving, it's your body telling you what it needs. It's, it's your body crying out for nutrients, cr crying out for what it needs. And I think that is so amazing and so intelligent. And it's something that should be honored and, and not just pushed off or blamed. Um, you know, or thought of as a problem because every time that I've had cravings for carbs or sugar and I've eaten it, um, the cravings have gone away, which, you know, and it's not like never ending cravings. They just continue and I just need to eat more and more and more. No, they would actually go away. Um, so we definitely want to make sure that we stop restricting carbohydrates and um, calories. So if our bodies aren't getting enough calories, uh, we're undernourished and we're going to have cravings and our bodies are going to be more demanding and, uh, for what they need, um, you know, calories to survive. Um, so we don't want to restrict calories either. The second way that I stopped binging um, is supplement. So this kind of ties into the cravings thing. So my biggest craving, and I actually read online that a lot of people's biggest craving is for chocolate. Um, and this is something that like, I've always had chocolate cravings and they've been so intense. But if you actually look a little further, um, chocolate cravings are actually a sign that you're low in magnesium. Well, lots of people are actually low in magnesium. Um, and like I said, this was one of my main cravings. And, and chocolate is one of the main things I would binge on. Sweets, but also mostly chocolates. Um, but I started supplementing um, magnesium bicarbonate. And I will probably create another video or Instagram post or something about this in more detail. But I started supplementing magnesium bicarbonate, which is... Um, you, you can actually make it at home using carbonated water and I think milk of magnesia um, and you kind of mix the two together and it makes a very readily bioavailable magnesium supplement that your, your cells use automatically. But when I started supplementing that daily, my sugar cravings went away miraculously. Um, so I, I give a lot to that because I feel like it has really helped with my chocolate and my sweet cravings. Um, but I also supplement other other nutrients that I feel like I don't get a lot of. Like personally, I don't do dairy, so I don't get a lot of calcium. Um, and I feel like that can lead to, to some cravings. You know, like I said, cravings are our bodies cry out for nutrients. So like if we're lacking a nutrient, of course our body's going to crave it. Um, but I did notice that I would binge a lot on like pizza and cheesy things like that. Um, one, that would break me out so bad uh, but I started supplementing with eggshell calcium which is another thing that you can actually make at your house um, and again I haven't had cravings so I'm guessing I'm doing something right uh, but this is just my personal experience um, and it, it's kind of interesting when you do have a craving 
to look up online, drgoogle.com. No, not Dr. Google, just Google um, <laughs> what your craving means. It's really cool to kind of see and understand from that level. And then the third thing that I did to kind of end my binges or stop them is I would actually listen to what my body needed and honor it. Um, so like when I go to the grocery store now, if, my, if I'm like, hmm, I really want strawberries, then I'm not like, no, I can't have strawberries. I'm like, I'm going to get some strawberries because obviously my body wants strawberries. Um, but like honoring it in that way, um, just being kind of intuitive or I don't really like intuitive eating, but just listening to what your body needs, you know, not being like, oh, my body says it needs a donut. I'm going to eat a donut. You know, like, I don't think that is really true. Like, if you just want to eat a donut, that's fine in moderation but your body isn't really craving a donut, it's craving something else, as I mentioned before. Uh, but those are like the three main things that have really helped me um, stop binges. And then I mentioned a little bit earlier, so I guess this will just be the fourth way. And I'm trying to like get these videos shorter, so bear with me here. But um, I guess the fourth thing is um, optimizing my environment. So as I mentioned, you know, if I was not eating enough food and I had a bunch of junk food in my house, you know, and I'm busy, of course, my first instinct is like, I'm going to eat the junk food because it's there. It's available. It's right, ready. I can eat it. Um, and I notice I do this anyways, but like, I like to have some snacks around so that if I am busy at work or something, I can just pick it up and eat it because it's easy, you know, instead of not eating when you're hungry, but really just optimizing your environment for success, like set yourself up for success. I still eat chips and um, beef jerky and like candy ginger and I have the stuff in my house, you know, things that I really like that I could eat a whole thing of sodas, whatever. But I think it's just about one, not restricting and two, optimizing your environment. Like, you know, knowing if you're busy, like prep a little bit of food so you have it ready. Um, that has really helped me too. Uh, but yeah, I hope that you found this video helpful and, uh, you know, maybe inspirational in a way. Like I said, if you uh, want to share your personal experience, feel free to reach out. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That really helps um, me, I guess. Not really, but I would love to see your reaction. Um, and yeah, happy Thursday. I am going to be putting out videos Tuesdays and Thursdays. I've been doing my best for the last couple weeks and I'm going to keep it up for you guys. Um, so thanks and have a great night.